is yeah. starting to get it. They just understand how they need to play. Well, we'll see whether they can get it together as we hop into Champion Select. Remember, bands may have changed just a little bit due to the fact that Vladimir runs a little bit slower, Malzahar's shield isn't as strong, and so far we can see some differences as Gangplank and LeBlanc have been taken away from GT, and there's the Shen and Twisted Fate bands coming in against Vici and Lung. In his back-to-back -back Shen matches, you can understand why that's the first ban. Yeah, you can also understand why Gangplank's gone, because Gim Goon's a monster on it. I yes, mean, this is. is one of his best champions, and they need him to be able to carry, so that is a lot of pressure now placed onto the game talent's top laner, you don't get your best champion against someone that is arguably better than you already. Yeah, well, it is going to be Twitch the follow-up. Of course, PentaQ has played it a fair bit. And there is the Hecarim, but Vladimir for the first pick for Easy Hoon is going to come in. Remember, Vladimir was banned against Easy Hoon every single early match of this season. The, the entire season. Just did not see the Bloodlord in the mid lane. He was the first one to really get onto it. So that's going to be snapped up. We'll see whether he can make it work, even with the fact that his pool has a little bit longer cooldown. Two seconds. Yeah, the difference is nothing. five flat movement speed at the start of the game, two seconds additional cooldown on the pool. But he does a lot of damage. Like that, that's yeah. what I'm trying to get behind. Uh, if you get him a Sivir, if you get him a Karma, the changes are nearly non-existent, Atlas. And that's why I agree with these two first picks. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the hovers are definitely indicating that you probably do want to get one of those for a Vladimir, and GT want to pick them away. Of course, kind of wishing that they had Savoki. Savoki, a phenomenal Karma player, but we'll see whether Republic's going to be playing it instead as they lock him away. Yeah, and the thing about uh, Karma is, you know, she also got hit this patch. Uh, Just a little bit, yep. Yeah, the Mantra E, the movement, scales with levels, so as a support, you know, you have to be able to get around the Rift and get some more levels into your E before that really becomes a powerful tool. As a mid laner, conscious decision between damage or shield, although shield max second was generally what you saw anyway. So, uh, has been slightly nerfed in that regard. Uh, still gets to the late game power, but then of course you're missing a slight amount of damage. So, in the mid lane, uh, it's hard to play against Vladimir because you do win the early game, but you're kind of against the ticking time bomb. Yeah, we'll see whether GT can get past it as well, assuming that that Karma is going to be heading over there. Caveman going to grab his Alistar. Extraordinary comfort and a lot of engage potential, especially if Dandy picks up the Gragas, and he does so much CC in this second round for Vici. Yeah, completely agree with that. I mean, Lung used to play a lot of top lane Gragas. I'm not yeah. expecting to see it, but it's just always worth pointing out in playoffs, especially when you've got a best of five. Curveballs can and will be thrown at each other. Uh, I love the fact that they've just gone heavy CC because, you know, Vladimir, he's a one-man wrecking crew if he can catch the team. So, you know, just get four other members that are going to hold them still while the Vladimir does his thing, really. Yeah. And look... You can see the Brom hover here. So thinking about maybe putting Republic on that Karma. Karma, sorry, Republic has experienced this matchup against RNG the other way around, where he was, in fact, the Vladimir, and he was diving in between turrets to kill the Karma. So the fact that they still think this is a counter pick is interesting to me. It is a counter pick. I, I will just dispel that myth. That was very, very poorly played from Xiaohu's side. Okay. Karma beats Vladimir in lane. Enough said. Well, we'll see whether Republic's going to be able to do it here, as the Rek'Sai is locked in for Wushang as well. So a lot of comfort coming down for GT, and it's understandable. It's now Endless thinking about going back to his Cogmore. As long considering the Nar towards the top side of the map, and will mean that they have a lot in order to protect this Cogmore, especially if Easy Hoon has to be dealt with. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's one of my favorite thing about protect the Cogmore comms is there was two ways you used to run them. The Juggermore, where everyone would just empower the Cogmore, he would run around. Or you would run it with like a LeBlanc in the mid lane, where you actually had to find the LeBlanc before you could dive onto the Cogmore, because otherwise the LeBlanc lights you up. So it's kind of this, the best kind of defense is a good offense. Yep. Uh, or, you know, can we just protect the Cogmore and get him through those earlier stages? It looks like this time they are going to run dual threats. And, you know, if they add a Poppy to it, that means that Sivir has to be really careful because Poppy historically solos out Sivir incredibly well. And the backline dive now picked up from this Vici comp is just ridiculous. If you add Gragas, Alistair to the Poppy, you've got linebackers coming in in three different roles. And, you know, one of the things that Samsung did really well as a team is actually... You know, take what Blue was doing, take what White was doing, and then innovate pick bands. I mean, we saw a lot of Kassadin top lane, yeah. things like that, that would really shut down mages before they were, 
you know, had it much counter in the top side of the map. And I think that uh, one thing that Dandy and Marta have done to their respective teams is really shorn up drafts. Every now and again, you'll see a wonky, wonky draft come out of one of them as they experiment with something new. I mean, we're talking about like Kha'Zix and things running around before they were necessarily popular. But generally in playoff games, they get the draft right majority of the time. And it showed in EDG versus RNG. Yes. Marta outdrafted the whole of EDG comprehensively last <laughs> final. Uh, so it's good to see that Dandy still hasn't lost his edge in playoffs. Most certainly has. As you can see, Gimgoon's going to lock down his most played champion. We've seen a little bit of a resurgence of Echo now that that Trinity Force can be picked up. Of course, in Flandre's hands did look fantastic in a few isolated situations, and we'll see whether he's going to make this matchup look good against Lung's Poppy. I think that this is one of the really interesting matchups as well because uh, Acorn. You know, we don't get to compliment Saint for many things, but yep. Akon has shown that Poppy wins a lot of lanes right now, and uh, you can go the tanky builds and still get enough damage done. We thought with the change to Sheen and, you know, the fact that we nerfed the Q base a lot, that Poppy wasn't going to see that much play, but it seems that AD carries now with how immobile a lot of them are, uh, really are still being chased down by that tiny weird Yorta with a big hammer. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see if Gimgoon can still win this matchup. Yeah, exactly. Especially with the fact that Poppy's movement speed on her W is buffed in 6.14. The fact that she gets a little bit more shield back on that buckler. Yeah, exactly right. And that's a lot of the matchup, being able to run before the third hit. That's exactly right. But ladies and gentlemen, coaches shake hands. Let's get into game number one of our first playoff match for the LPL. Thank you very much, PentaQ, and here we are onto the rift for our first playoff match. It's going to be Vici down a game already versus Game Talents. Of course, they're only down a game because they were in the fourth seed as opposed to the third. So it wasn't actually played. It's just a game advantage here for GT. So they managed to come out of their group a little bit higher. So that is the first time that I've seen Academy Vladimir. Really? Yeah. The first time ever. That is really interesting. I know. I'm a Nosferatu fan. You know that. You've got to be a hipster. You can see, no lane swaps to come in. Both of our bottom lanes towards the bottom side. As, of course, it's 6.15, and we're just not going to see it. What is more hipster than a, you know, 16-year-old Vladimir <laughs> running around at high school? Atlas, I'm, I'm questioning you already today. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got his scarf on. Uh, really interesting keystone choices here. Yeah. Actually. You know, we see double bond of stone. We don't normally see that. We normally see a little bit of Thunderlords coming out of Alistar particularly in Braum melee matchups. You sometimes see Grasp as well yeah. for a little bit more trading impact. Of course, Braum got hit on this patch, uh, so a lot of his early trading has been gutted. So it'll be interesting to see whether they just go both towards scaling, you know, draw that neutral line. Siva does catch Cogmore in scaling because of the AoE crits as the game progress progresses. Uh, so this will be... I'm really interested to see how this plays out now. Well, Republic actually waiting for that ward to die. We'll be able to go in, grab himself... A few little chickens. Very cheeky. On the board first, as Easy Hoon does spot him out. Moving back here into the mid lane. We'll see whether he's going to be able to punish Republic for his cheeky move into his jungle, but doesn't look like it. It's nice early stuff. The punish won't come out yet. It will come out the fact that, you know, the ultimate won't be available potentially for level two for Republic. Uh, and being able to get that empowered Q into a Vladimir early and really trade back is important. Wow, Endless actually nailing the Caustic Spittle onto Pentacu, but Pentacu still able to win that trade towards the bottom side as the laning phase has broken out. Okay, that is a str one of the strangest things I've ever seen. Normal Cogmore players actually don't even take Q. Yeah. You normally evenly max E and W until the end of the laning phase. Uh, just because E is your only kind of disengaged tool as a Cogmore. And you can see that it's hurting, not able to farm from Reach. Did get one advantageous trade, but since then, Pentacue's kind of just been hitting him in the head. Yeah, slightly zoned, as well as the fact that, of course, that Voidoo is pretty good for wave clear in a pinch. Mm -hmm. 
So, see whether it is going to be able to work out. Endless probably looking to get that wave to crash towards him, farm under turret comfortably, scale himself towards that first big item. As Dandy, you can see, starting on his red buff, Wushang taking a Rift Scuttler is now long. Uses that buckler to eat some of this damage, but Gimgoon's so quick with that Z-Drive Resonance. But you can see the trade's still relatively even, so not really going in either top laner's direction. And the fact that he hasn't even got that W yet to break up the combo and is able to trade effectively shows that Poppy does really fare a little bit better in this matchup. Um, and you can see that Gimgoon's eating through a lot of his mana bar to pretty much trade neutrally against a Poppy. Yeah, and he just landed his parallel convergence as well. Lung gave him a lot of spare time to smack him in the head, but you're right. Just so durable is that little Yordle is now endless. Utilizing that Relic Shield in order to stay healthy on this bottom side of the map. And they have the wave in a good position, especially with Dandy moving down here. Easy Hoon shoving up. Isn't going to have too much trouble from Wushong at this point in the game, but he is moving over to his red buff now. And we'll see whether he decides to get any ganks going on. And Republic also took the teleport. So, you know, maybe looking to make a little bit more plays around the map. Not really all that concerned with winning out in the 1v1. So it will be interesting to see how this, I mean, plays out. I would expect now that you don't really see the Athenes, you see a Morella Nomicon, because something has to shut down the Vlad, and they just don't have an Ignite on their lineup. Yeah, and Pentacu probably wants to get to that three-item spike as quickly as possible, doesn't want to insert an Executioner's Calling too early into his build. Let's see whether he does change things up. Is Caveman looking to try and zone? Does Vici now have control? This bottom side of the map, good parallel convergence timing, but fantastic W out along to try and stop the phase dive. And once again, look how even the trades are, and I mean, that's just corrupting potions Dorian's shield picked up, so nothing's really going to be able to bully Lung out of that lane matchup, short of a fantastic gank. Uh, as we already said, because lack of Ignite, mid lane's kind of just become a stalemate. Um, Pressure on the bottom lane to really be able to impact, and that's embarrassing easy. I and mean, you just missed two creeps because of that pull. <laughs> and he missed the cannon creep as well, so I'm completely upset. So they've decided even a gank won't work. Let's just send everyone up there, but they have been spotted out. And Long actually relatively low, but does get the wallbang onto Wushong. He's tanking the turret. He's going to die for first blood. That's going to be Long picking it up. No lolly pop even once more. That is a horrible piece of communication coming out of the Game Talents roster. Republic backed away, did not have ultimate. And then, to make matters worse, to run back quicker, burnt the shield. So there was nothing available to save Wu Shuang after he went underneath that turret. And now Dandy's into the bottom lane. Yeah, you can see Endless moving forward. Caveman gets a massive headbutt, flash pulverize. And there's the flash body slam from Dandy. Pentacue taken down first. The teleport's going to be late and cancelled. As Vici get two on the board. Vici's experience is just coming through. Ill-advised turret dive bottom lane. Dandy sees where the Rek'Sai is. Transitions it bot into the jungle into another kill for Vici. Just fantastic. All the while, Easy Hoon just farming up as much as he likes. He's now about a wave ahead here on this Vladimir. That late game insurance policy that they barely need with the Cogmore on the roster is still there. Vici just so comfortable on the map right now. And this is just looks like another day in the office with Vici. I mean, we already said that they ramped up at the right time of the season. They did have those veterans to be able to do so. And, you know, they're proving it against Game Talents that they do have, you know, that just little bit of an edge on Summoner's Rift. Uh, I think it's also key to note the Republic, no teleport available, is going to have a hard time sticking with Vladimir now. You either have to be able to bully him or match recalls. And Vlad just shoves like no one else because he doesn't have a mana bar. Yeah. And can just freely do it over and over again. You can even try and harass him out, but he just uses that Crimson Rush, gets himself back up, transfused there in a pinch as well. So no worries at all for Easy Hoon, who's just happy to sit in lane for as long as he likes. You can see Gimgoon on your screen right now. Not looking all that happy about his situation. Now a kill down versus the Poppy. Especially just because how the kill came out. I mean, that should have been a kill. When you rotate three people into a top lane, especially when the jungle is on the opposite side of the map, you should be able to trade one for one. So yeah. you understand exactly why they feel that disappointment because that was GT taking the early game risk, forfeiting some farm to be able to transition it into a top lane advantage, and they just didn't get it. Yeah, and the fact that they were able to so instantly transition that towards the bottom side, and is that just Dandy knowing exactly how to counteract any movement on the map? Is that just good movement? Well, that's actually a mistake from Dandy. I mean, he 
didn't really ward deep enough in the top side to be able to catch out the early movement. So his top lane should have died. And it would have been one of those situations where you make the best of a bad situation. You get, gave up first blood on top lane, but you know we're going to pick up a kill on bottom lane. So what made it even better for him and made him look like a genius is that yeah. all of a sudden Lung just lives through the gank and you know then Danny goes bottom and cleans up what is the reactionary uh, play that he's always been really famous for. So that's just Vici outplaying their opponents in multiple levels. Yeah, and of course now setting themselves up in multiple different lanes. And is this going to be extraordinarily difficult now for GT? Was their late game going to look worrying if they were even anyway, or is the Siva able to pull them ahead in that regard? No, I think Siva Echo, like, they're, they're two very, very good late game carries, so I don't think that it becomes all that worrying right now. A lot of pressure actually transitions over to City on the Braum and being mm. able to shut down uh, the Vladimir damage at, before it really picks up and gets some good mid-game team fights. But, you know, when you already lose out on top lane, when you already lose out on bottom lane, the game does become incredibly difficult to pull back, especially if you're not going to win the scaling matchup in the mid lane. Yeah, it's true. And look, we do have to go back to the fact that it's 6.15. And are you expecting these teams to move around the map earlier on here? It is coming towards that six-minute mark. I think we're a little bit past it now. Are you expecting lane swaps to come in to try and rush down that first turret? Well, if you expected anyone to do it, it would have been the Vici bottom lane. I mean, they had yeah. Alistar Cogmore. That's not a good lane. We used to see <laughs> LGD, who played the lane a lot, lane swap away from it nearly 100% of the time when they were playing it. So I think that uh, if anyone was going to lane swap, it would have been the Vici Gaming lineup. And now that they're ahead in their lanes, uh, I don't know if you can really afford to do it if you game talents, because does that just snowball into opening up the map earlier than you would have liked and 1-3-1 gets set up? So, you know, it's there's a whole host of problems right now if you game talents. And you just have to be able to take the small wins, you know, get your deep vision reset and look to make some good jungle plays around the map. Yeah, so where does Wuxiang have to look next is, I guess, the, the follow-up question. Does he have to now try and keep the Poppy down, get Gimgoon a little bit of a so Poppy's one of those weird champions. She just gets so damn tanky so early in the game. I think you just give that one up. You're like, sorry, man. You know, I kind of <laughs> screwed you, but I'm not going to do it any further. So, you know, you look bottom lane. Cogmore, Alistar, they've used summoner spells. They're not level six yet. Incredibly squishy. So I, if I am Wuxuang, I get into the bottom lane. I'm a Rek'Sai. I'm very tanky at this stage of the game. I'm looking to set up turret dives. I'm looking to transition that into either an early turret or an early dragon for my team and try and peg that one back. Yeah, okay. That's a good point. And the fact that the first dragon is going to be the Ocean Drake at the same time, does this mean that Teams are going to be looking at that early, of course. Ocean is in a weird place at the moment, especially in my head, because I just don't know what the priority is on that dragon. It looks like it's the lowest priority, honestly. Yeah. Uh, it went from being my my favorite drake in the early game to, and the second best drake, in my opinion, late game. I didn't really rate Mountain all that much. Mountain yeah. is one of those drakes that uh, if you do a job, it helps you do it better. Whereas Infernal or Ocean, to me, were just kind of game-changing in what they were able to add to your kit. Um, but right now, Ocean really does seem to be in a very strange place, unless you can stack multiple Ocean Dragons. Yeah, and just make it look like you're running a potion permanently. As you can see, back into the game. Still more farming as Pentacue throws out a boomerang. Endless dodges the second tick. It will otherwise be okay. The Reindeer, more than fine here towards the bottom side with his recurve bow. But thankfully for Pentacue, he's got his BF sword. So the power level's relatively similar. Oh, as you hate to see it. Yeah, that is a problematic situation. Wuxiang just smites away the blue buff and just tunnels his way out. Danny was going to take it for himself as well. He was looking to extend his lead over the Rek'Sai, who seems to still be going the Tiamat rush, even though his team's behind. Yeah. Don't be fooled. That's not a warrior. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I agree with that, actually. I mean, they already have two teleports. They don't need it for 131. He should be able to farm at an equal rate to the Gragas with a Cinder Hulk rush. Uh, and I think that they need the wards out of a Sight Stone. Uh, a little bit more than they need any of that pressure. Yeah, and a lot of the time, you know, when a Rek'Sai does fall behind, I mean, Barmy Cinder pretty oh. good for clear as well. And he's gone Sightstone before it anyway. Now I just outright disagree with how he's building. Okay, well, odd, to say the least, out of Wuxiang. So when you have a Tiamat, you're, either, you're able to power farm to the point that then you get your Trinket Wards into the enemy jungle, and you can look to make very aggressive, proactive plays where you're fighting the enemy jungler. I mean, you just have more combat stats at that point of the game. Going half of the combat stats and then into vision control. Uh, we already mentioned that his team fell behind, but I feel like if you're already 700 gold deep into a build, you just commit at that stage. Yeah. Pay the extra 400, get yourself some boots, and try and tango a little bit. Well, at the moment, just back into his jungle, farming things out. Somehow, the machete and longsword switch position as well, which confuses me. Of course, they cost the same amount. Yeah, I was about to say, that's not a player doing it, by the way. No, I know. Uh, but why did they move? I mean, they're still equal. 
It was just very, uh, it boggled me just a little. As you can see, Vici now with about a 1.5 thousand gold lead. It's still extraordinarily early days here at 19, nine minutes in. And Long, he's gone for the Sapphire Crystal, Ruby Crystal. Looks like a catalyst could be built. I assume it's not. Looks like an early Sheen might come down for the Poppy, though. Yeah, Sheen into, you know, Barmy Cinder, something along those lines. Uh, Sapphire Crystal is one of those items that is just so cut-wrenching to have to pick up by Yeah, itself. the combat inefficiency doesn't feel too good. But you saw that he was circling through multiple rotations. He has gone back now and grabbed a Sheen, so that's Ooh, good at least. Ooh, here's the head by Pulverize. The exhaust down onto Pentaq as well. He's trying to run with the ultimate. Throws down the flash. The heal had to be used as well as the ultimate as Long. Looking to He's 1v2 right back. here. Dandy's coming in. Wushong has to get the heck out of there. Back to his turret. Lung takes control of the lane once again. And all of a sudden, Lung looks much more scary. Is now Easy Hoon in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, throws down the Hemo Plague, actually. Tides of Blood comes in. Still has the pool available, remember, as Dandy picks it up with the ultimate. Hemo Plague helping out with the damage amplification. And Easy Hoon says, well, I still got my pool. I ain't yeah, too worried. Exactly right. Easy Hoon just able to play that bait fantastically. But what could have been if Republic just picked up at Ignite? That's how you generally win this game. And wow, the <laughs> Magi is picked up already. GT feel like they are in deep trouble, and I agree with them. Yeah, most certainly. 3-0 to zero now, 2,000 gold behind. Teleport's coming in. Yeah, City actually getting the flash out of Endless already as Caveman uses the ultimate, but will be able to get relatively far away. In goes Dandy, though, gets the slow. City has been headbutted back. Good parallel convergence placement there from Gimgoon. Gets a stun onto Endless, and Republic is going to come in and mop that kill up. In the back line, it is, of course, Lung being able to take out at least one member of GT. And Easy Hoon turning up a little bit late. Vici looking to turn it. Heroic Charge comes in. Massive double knock-up as Pentacue's going to melt. Wushong's going to fall down. Gimgu now running for the hills. And Vici turn it on a dime immediately. Four for two trade right now for Vici Gaming. I mean, that was set up by GT. They felt like they had to hit the go button. And two members were late out of Vici. But it just did not matter. They already have the damage. And a huge headbutt pulverized combo out of Caveman. I mean, we already said it, but as this bottom lane duo gets better, it just looks a whole host different for the Vici lineup. It most certainly does. I'm not even looking at the uh, bottom lane at the moment. This is a 3 0 2 poppy, as we're going to have a look at this one again. Yeah, so you see the teleport play comes out. I mean, all of a sudden you have a Karma flanking from very far behind, Rexai heading in. But Lung just able to pick up City and then punt away a member here meant that they weren't ever really in a numbers advantage, even though they were able to beat their counterparts down the river. And this play out of Caveman, Polv into, uh, headbutt into Flash Polv, gets the knock-up that Easy Hoon was looking for, and he's able to clean up a couple of kills. Yeah, really good timing on Caveman having his flashback up as well. Actually relatively lucky as Easy Hoon. Look at how tanky he is. I think that Proto Belt is probably done yeah. as he heads back. Just used it, Dash Cannon online. Yeah. There's Living Artillery now to come out of Endless as Caveman was looking for a cute little headbutt pole. Gets a good trade. There's Long denying a lot of the damage out of Gimgu in here. Won't be able to get that buckler though as it's underneath the turret. You can see there's actually Trinity Force being first item for Gimgu. All across the board, I'm just looking down the game talents and I'm seeing, you know, things that I just disagree with slightly. If yeah. If you're going to fall behind early, can you really afford to go for an Essence Reaver or do you just have to try and get the two item spike of what is Zeal Item Infinity Edge to really kickstart the game? You know, going for um, Magi's well, that just speaks for itself. Uh, you know, Tiamat Rush, Trinity Force Rush, uh, he's about to get soloed. Yeah, well, the ultimate had to be used there from Gimgu and his top. Republic. Yeah, looking to try and find his way in long, unaware. As the Mantra Q comes out, throws down his W. There's the ultimate, wants to get rid of Republic, who's dodging, does actually get himself out of the way. There is a flash up still for Lung, who uses it, gets himself back to the turret and will survive. Incredibly well played out of the Poppy one more time. I mean, Lung is just showing that he really is the better top laner in this matchup, able to avoid gank after gank, turn them around for himself. And he's even sticking around to pick up some farm because the trade at the start of that was so pro in Poppy's favor. Yeah. And immediately, Vici on the other side of the map, pick up the dragon, steal away a blue buff. Possibly can flank around, but look at all this deep vision that they have on the bottom side of the map. Every time they want to look for some sort of dive once again, 
will be available. And it's so important because if you're behind, you look at Endless and you think this could be free kills. This is where we should be taking advantage of the game. However, they've just set up such a good deep network of tunnels. All of a sudden, there are a lot of people in the mid lane. In comes Caveman. Vici looking to just lock down that first structure bonus. Two caster creeps are there, but this tower will fall down. And to add insult to injury, Vici grabbed themselves a whole bunch of gold. And even worse, I mean, if they transition this into anything like a Rift Herald, the game just becomes oh. nigh impossible to be able to pull back. And Dandy just denied two buffs from Wusheng as well. 68 to 65, as the Super Farm Rek'Sai has been unable to live up to that name at this point. And a 5,000 gold lead is what we're left with. Vici just in so much control. We expected something like this out of this game because Vici did look stronger coming out of their group. But I honestly was expecting something a little bit different as uh, that was interesting. Caveman headbutt polving someone who was going back to base. Pentacue. He got he out of there. Um, I, I think it's it kind of just tells that, you know, regular season League of Legends, sure, that's one thing. And... GT were able to have a pretty good split, you know, especially for where they came from. Uh, M3, HYG, those two teams yes. kind of getting their players together. But uh, it's that old saying, you know, uh, form is temporary, class is timeless. And there really are some classy players on VG that you would expect to have deep playoff runs uh, this time around. And they're playing patient League of Legends here as well. I mean, it's cool, calm, and collected out of VG in this game number one, and it's been game times that have been trying to make moves and maybe being a little bit overzealous. You and know, we kind of pointed out the flaw in game talent strategy. I mean, they're not really getting all that much done top lane, but they keep going back there. Well, Easy Hoon just throws down the Ghost Republic, misses a whole bunch of his buttons, as there's the Hemo play used. As Easy Hoon flashes after Republic, Dash Cannon comes in. Hemo Plague not enough to take down the Karma, who will have to... Go back to base after using that flash. Lung battling with Gimgoon, who can't dash around, but does at least get his passive. Dandy throws down his ultimate as Republic once again has to attempt to back. And will be denied a wave. But all of a sudden, there's a huge play to be made on the bottom side of the map. They are rotating. Republic and Gimgoon have teleport available. But can they get there in time? Well, they're they just back out. It. Yeah. All right. Not this time. Parallel Convergence comes down. Gimgoon grabs himself a shield. His Trinity Force has been done. He's got four stacks on the Dark Seal as well. So looking okay. But Long wants to teleport back to that lane by the looks of things as that wave is crashing towards him. Yeah, and that really means that they have closed the window at least on any aggressive play bottom lane for Vici. Although it looks like Lung just going to foot this one. Yeah, wants to hold onto it. Easy Hoon. We're going to try and snake his way in the back side. That is going to be a pink wall that spots him out. Looking to clear that one out beforehand. It does deter Gimgoon from heading closer. That's a really smart rotation out of Easy Hoon. You know, just showing himself top lane. There wasn't really all that much to do mid lane anyway. Uh, yep. Lost a lot of the kill threat, you know, with the ghost and the flash on cooldown. So, ghost top lane saves the turret. You know, make sure Gimgoon backs away. Whoa, there's the flash body slam as Republic gets HEPA pulled as well. Back into Easy Hoon. The transfuse is going to come in. Dash cannon for the style points as he picks up another kill. I just think that's hilarious. I mean, obviously, they're trying to tilt Republic a little bit. Get This is a best of five. And, I mean, anything goes on Summoner's Rift. But burning a flash out of your support to kill the already 0-3 mid laner just feels bad, man. Yeah. And it might be the fact that they pressed the tab button, saw the Magi's, and said, well, this could be an easy target. Because now Endless has his Renan's Hurricane completed. 0, 1, and 5, feeling very fine on this Cogmore at the moment, moving towards that later stage of the game. 13 CS in the lead. Pretty happy. And they've given every blue buff to Danny. There's little things about this Vici game that you can see that it's just they're incredibly well practiced. They know that Gragas loses the farm battle. However, if you give him a blue buff, he farms with the best of them. He can just spam abilities. Endless in trouble. Well, there's the flash out of Endless. Tries to get out of the way. Exhaust down as well. Concussive Blows needs one more auto attack as they do land it. But Endless is safely underneath this turret. He falls down, but can they get any follow-up kills as the teleports are coming in? Heroic Charge easily able to lock down the kill onto Wusheng and uses his ult just to get the knock-up. Caveman still waiting for cooldowns. Gets the triple pulverize as City, thankfully with a shield, will attempt to get out. But Pentacue's not going to be so lucky. Long throws his hammer into a massive barrel to take down the Karma as now Gimgoon off to the side has to once again run away. That's a four for one 
Is Vichia using the Cogmore as bait? Yeah, we keep talking about it, but you have to shut the Cogmore lane down. They're getting multiple members into that lane, but it's just not coming out in the, their favor. Kimgoon, the only man standing twice now, and uh, the rest of his team just kind of like dominoes around him. Exactly right. I mean, thankfully for Gimgoon, he's able to keep hold of his Dark Seal stacks. But, I mean, that's about as far as the good news story goes. Caveman looking to farm underneath the turret. Very difficult for a support. Uses his headbutt to do so. And Lung's going to take down yet another turret. That is the whole outer ring consumed here for Vici. Three to zero on that mark. And Endless going to eat through this Mountain Drake with Dandy. And Caveman's been on point this game. I mean, between Caveman and Lung, their target selection onto the carries has just been beautiful. He's had multiple man knockups in every one of these little skirmishes. Uh, there's not really the man has done wrong going into what is technically our second game of this best of five. Yeah. It's been fantastic. Of course, 10 out of the 12 kills he's been participating in as well. Just brilliant play out of Caveman at player that we have been highlighting quite a bit as the season progresses, but my goodness, he's showed up today here for the playoffs. It's exactly when you need to be performing. But you have to look at the top side of the map. That's a 5-0-4 Poppy. He's got his Iceborne Gauntlet as well. Lung is so comfortable right now, and he's only going to get worse. That was the problem to begin with, is the fact that Poppy with three items is disgusting, and he's very close to getting there. Yeah, exactly right. And a very accelerated pace. I mean, you can talk about the top side of the map, but the fact that it's all been reaction and replay, the fact that, you know, Vici haven't really even had to show anything going into this first best of five, uh, just is a whole lot scarier for game talents. Yeah. And you know, anyone that's going to get them later on in the playoffs. Well, now Caveman looking to loop around with Shang here as well. He's actually taken this 1v1. Caveman doesn't quite know where to go. As Wushong does make his way out, Shield comes in, so a lot of movement speed now for the Rek'Sai. Caveman moves back down. Lots of pings coming in here as well. You can see someone wants to make a play. His Republic will find Dandy. We'll see whether the snare comes out. Body Slam used to get himself out of the way, but that's four people collapsing. And Dandy is going to struggle to survive this one. Concussive Blows locks him down, and that's going to be the kill for Republic. Finally, that Majize is on the board. Ooh. Doesn't get the knockup on Endless, though, does City. And GT still chasing for more with five members. They're not going to be able to find them, though. Yeah, in the end, they shut down Dandy. They're able to secure some farm onto their AD carry, but they burn the teleport for it. And that should have been a second kill onto the Alistar. So still a little bit of nerves, it looks like, out of the young support player. But good job to Game Talents being able to peg that one back. Oh, well, Caveman gets the headbutt. Finds the pulverize as well in mid-dash as Long gets the wall bank. Good ultimate out of Gimgoon to try and get himself out of there. But the knock-up comes through. And are the auto attacks going to be enough? Endless flashes. Doesn't actually flash. Just picks up the kill with an auto. Is now with Shang in trouble. Phenomenal pulverize. Gets him out of the tunnel. And that is going to be Easy Hoon's kill. He knocked him out of two. He knocked him out of the first one with the headbutt, it looked like. And then the repeat looked like it wanted to come through, but he stopped that as well. That's going to be Baron at only 22 minutes into this game. And Vici just look like they're on a different level. Caveman is an absolute beast right now. As the scrying all comes in, looks like Vici don't even care about it. With Gimgun and Wushong dead, who's going to smite away this Baron? The Pokes attempting to come in from GT. They've got a lot of wards in there, but Dandy locks down the Baron. Republic actually knocked back in as Dandy fight. Finds his way over the side. City in amongst it. He'll fall down to the Tides of Blood. As Easy Hoon grabs himself a kill. Even on top of this Baron. Nice barrel comes down. Republic tanks that. But Vici just so far ahead right now. 11,000 at 23 minutes. Yeah, this game is an absolute wash. I mean, mid lane, 504 plus pretty much ATCS. Top lane, 507. Really the only person that's had a rough game is endless, and that's just because the rest of his team's letting him die before slaughtering the rest of the players. And uh, he's a Cogmore. He doesn't really care. He's accelerating in his build because of all that global gold. Uh, there's not much the game talents line can line up can do here to pull this one back. Yeah, as endless is going to be able to at least get himself a Gromp for being the bait. He at least gets something back. Sparkler comes in from long, and it is starting to really ramp up. That passive, of course, getting a slight buff. Team at helps. I mean, yeah. when you have that TM out as a poppy, you know that the game's going pretty well. We saw that he had the Ruby Chris, and I was expecting Spirit Visage. You know, that's just the, the general thing. But he just feels so far ahead. May as well grab a little bit of extra damage. Yeah, Titanic Hydra. Why not? I mean, helps out the wave clear. It means that you don't have to spam abilities there. Uh, 
Not really much else to say about it. It's a snowball item. He's going to kill the Sivir really quickly. He most certainly is, and possibly even the Echo. Is Caveman going to come and just hoof the Rift Scuttler momentarily? Along now, like you said, very comfortable farming this one out. As Caveman finds himself a ward. Vici looking to put the pressure on. The suffocation has begun as Dandy has been living on this side of the jungle. Endless, of course, now relegated to farming out his Gromp on the other side of the map. This Baron Boff starting to get used as Easy Hoon pulls it towards the bottom side of the map. And Lung still pushing. Haven't seen too much sieging, though. It's over halfway done. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is shove into a mid lane wave a little bit prematurely. Instead, they're just setting up what is pretty much a 1-3-1. One, one. Dandy flexing between bottom and mid. You can see that they just shove them off the turrets. There's not really all that much game talents can do right now. They have to deal with waves. They have to deal with all of that gold that's been picked up on the enemy lineup. Well, Easy Hoon has a death cap as well. So, I mean, I wouldn't want to go near him either, to be honest. Is he right? Just using the inside track, getting themselves back into the mid lane now. As Long has full control over this top side. Gimgoon, of course, at full health. But not sure what he can do to try and fight off this poppy. He's just going to stand, keep these minions buffed up. GT now have to deal with this mid lane inner turret being pushed. Good spell shield out of Pentakey denies the living artillery damage, but you might need that against the likes of Caveman's headbutt. Is Easy Hoon continuing to put pressure here on this bottom side? And GT just struggling. They are so far up against the ropes. Yeah, well, this is where, you know, the first game comes in handy. You know, they didn't even have to play it. They pick up that one free win because they finished above Vici in the standings. As now they're looking for Easy Hoon. Yeah, they find a good snare. There's the Hemo Plague out, though. Is Easy Hoon looking for the 1v2? Able to fight it off, actually. Look at that damage. The Crimson Rush to finish off Republic. As Gimgoon looking to try and fight this one out. But Easy Hoon, when he gets those cooldowns back, it's going to be a problem. Another Crimson Rush to come in. Look at that health back for the Vladimir. And all he needed was a ghost. The inner turret falls on the top side of the map. There is not a whole lot GT can do. Yeah, so all of a sudden, Vladimir 604 Flame Horizon achieved in the mid lane. And you know, this is what Game Talents picked themselves into. Baron has expired, but they're still going. Yeah, there's a head by Pulver on a Pentacue as well. Not the target that GT want to lose early on as the ultimate's down on a caveman, saving him. The turret's already fallen as well. Decent ultimate's come out to stop the body slam as Dandy's trying to get amongst him. But another good pulverized Pentacue's picked up. Endless, however, as Vici's health bars are getting low, apart from Longs, who just looks like he can tank forever. And Easy Hoon's still making his way back in. Big flank to come down from Republic as he's looking to get himself in the back line. And Vici looking to try and escape. Good ultimate comes out. There's a the headbutt pole of Republic. Unable to do too much. As Caveman still alive. Wushong has to overextend for it. But does he fall down? Lung picks up the support in the back line. And there goes Wushong's Rek'Sai. Republic gets flashed on. There's the ultimate out of Dandy. Gets keg bopped and slowed. As Easy Hoon looking to try and catch up. Flashes forward. Picks it up with the Tides of Blood. And Vici just look like they don't need a bottom lane. They're going to take down this inhibitor. As I said, top side of the map is more than enough for Vici to win this best of five. They're going to pick up game one in pretty short fashion, you feel, because at this much of a goal deficit, I mean, what are we at? 16,000 and only ridiculous. 27 minutes in Atlas. I mean, as I said, this is the best thing about finishing above them. Now it's just a best of three after this one. And what they're doing is now fighting inside the enemy base. Vici do move their way over. There's the Hemo Plague Pentacue! He's going to pop. There's the legendary Vladimir as Long makes his way over the top. Doesn't get the stun. Still very tanky despite that low health bar, especially with the W running. Good parallel convergence. Knocks up the Vladimir. That pull is able to be used in the nick of time. Three-man knock-up comes in, but the Vladimir does eventually fall down. Wushong's in trouble. Long still looking for more. Grabs the kill. Concussive blows comes down. Spells his demise, but Endless has made his way back in. Living artillery grabs City. And Vici, despite the fact that they were trickling in, still able to make it look pretty easy. Yeah, so Vici, you just need to, you know, go back to base, calm down a little bit. I think uh, so too. Grab some items and clean up this game. You can see a little bit of a laugh. Wow, that is the closest thing to a smile I've seen on Easy Hoon in a very long time. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, he's an absolute monster at this stage of the game. Probably going to pick up a Void Staff when he respawns. And uh, as I said, this one, it's just down to, you know, when are they actually going to hit the Nexus Atlas? <laughs> That is a very good point. There's still some inhibitors to go down. That Baron is going to be up in 50 seconds as well as Vici now possibly move over to that side. Look at Lung's damage. What last fight? 
I mean, there was like <laughs> seven of them. That graph means nothing he to me. He was the fastest runner. That's how he managed to get around and get in amongst it and do so much damage. But I just don't know what fight they're talking about. Was it the <laughs> top one? Was it the teleport that came about ten seconds later? Not sure. Personally. Now Lung has a bevy of items. Looking for possibly a dead man's plate after that Titanic Hydra. A little bit more of that damage flavor. I like it. Skipping the magic resist altogether. Ignoring Republic, basically. As the Poppy pretty comfortable with just a big health bar and some Merc Treads. And Dandy hitting himself over the side. Slow comes in onto City as there's a headbar. Paul of Unbreakable looks pretty breakable right now as the ultimate comes down. Long is thinking about turning around, but that's five members that he has to deal with. They get a pick. And that will spell Baron here for Vici if they want it. And poor City, I mean, he's just trying to get any Skerica vision he can put his hands on right now. Uh, that's not going to work out, however. This caveman caught out a little bit. No, I'm not sure whether he even is. I feel like they're in his barn now as Wushong taking damage from Endless. So much of it as well with that Gwinsu's Rage Blade. Caveman, the uh, ultimate has run out. Baron falls down though and the cow will fall to the phase dive out of Gimgoon. But Easy Hoon's made his way over the top. Look at the damage out of this Vladimir. That is despicable. And he's ghosting. Picks up the kill easily with the transfuse. And then just tides of blood onto some minions to celebrate. Super creeps are heading towards the Nexus turrets. And Long is going to meet them with a teleport. Vici. What an incredible performance, game number one. They will just wander past these towers and try and pick up the victory. Gimgoon wondering what he can do, and the answer is not a whole lot at this stage of the game. Yeah, and you know, it looked like it was just oh coming down to semantics God. a little bit as even Endless gets in on the party. Beach will pick convergence. up game two. They're going to bring us back to 1-1, one, one. and I mean... This was even more ga one sided than Game 1 Atlas, and they got it gifted to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's probably the quote of the game spawn because it certainly did look like that. Vici in control from approximately that first misjudged turret dive. And game talents honestly just looked out class. And look, we said that Vici's lineup, even when they went into pick and bans, just had an easier way to win the game. I guess they had a lot more options heading into Summoner's Rift and really did show with how they were able to play that one out. I mean, Dandy went back to a very heavy counter ganking style, being able to make proactive plays only when a mistake had been made out of game talents, just like this one. Yeah. City headbutted out of the way. I mean, it was looking okay because the teleports came in a little bit faster there for GT. But the turnaround was just beautiful. Caveman waits for his cooldowns, gets himself back in there with low health. And there it is, the flash pole to set everything up. And I hope Caveman gets the MVP. I mean, I always say this, but when all of the carries look like they're doing their job, it generally is just behind really good support. And you can see he was trying to save the Void Puppy here. Polv onto three members, headbutt onto the priority target, turns this one back around with the help of Lung. I mean, Lung gets a critical wall smash, two-man knock-up, and then Caveman goes back in, all three members with the headbutt pole. The Just man was monstrous. an absolute monster on the Alistar. Complete beast. Lung as well needs an honorable mention in the MVP department because the poppy play was fantastic. That target selection was beautiful, recognized exactly who was tanking the turret, picked that target off because he knew that he was going to be assisted. Just stunning play out of Vici, but it, of course, is a best of five series. They still need to win two more to get themselves to the next round of these playoffs, and we'll see that next game right after the break.